protocol who is a member of Acre DAOs and going to be a regular presence in our meetings in the coming quarter. Um, Mike is here and is going to, you know, uh, carry us for the hour. Uh, I will come back at the end and just say a few words about the quarter ending and and Asia. But if you have just joined the space and are in the voice channel chat, I did drop two links at the top of the chat, um, which are, you know, really great reference references that uh, a recording of Rune in Korea and um, his tweet thread um that really matches what i heard in the room in, at token 2049 so there's, there's definitely documentation that will really give you exactly kind of what was said and what was being talked about in asia over the past couple of weeks but um i'll say a little bit more about that at the end of our meeting so without further ado mike take it away all right thank you so much kianga uh, let me share my screen. One sec. All right. Um, actually, I need to share another screen. Sorry about that. Okay. Um, so I'm going to talk about today, uh, since I already introduced uh, Binance Protocol before. Um, so I want to focus more about um, how this is all related to um, alignment and uh, to maker, uh, but from the perspective of public goods uh, and negative externalities also. Um, so let me just start with uh, markets and markets and feedback loops. So we have, uh, you know, if we look at um, any market, um, any product, uh, you clearly have a feedback loop. You can buy it. You get, uh, you know, you pay money. Uh, you get the product or a service or whatever it is. Um, and the feedback loop is basically that the more people like the product, um, the more money goes into it, and uh, the process uh, kind of can perpetuate itself. Uh, if the product is less popular, uh, obviously less money is going into it. Uh, the company or the person can improve on it, uh, and so on. But we don't have uh, the same effective feedback loops for either public goods or negative externalities, uh, which basically means that if you produce something that benefits um, a lot of people, but you cannot capture the value um, in what you produce because there's no exchange value for your pro for whatever you produce, uh, then you can create it, but you don't get the reward and you cannot produce more of it, and there's no incentive to do that. There's no incentive to produce. Um, and for negative externalities, it's the other way around. So if you produce something in the market, but I mean, obviously, a very clear example is if it's pollution and stuff like that. But even if it's, um, let's say, a social media platform, there's a lot of negative externalities in the form of you know, um, creating, you know, toxic content and creating uh, things that are really bad for, uh, you know, the social fabric, but you still do it because it doesn't matter uh, in terms of your profitability. So you create these negative externalities, but there's no feedback loop that says, you know, if you do that, that's going to harm uh, not just the, the the society around you, but also harm your business. Uh, so because you don't have that, we have more negative externalities and we have fewer public goods. Um, so that's just kind of how generally, um, you know, markets work. Um, but there are ways to capture um, uh, both public goods, uh, basically capture the value of that and also uh, kind of restrict negative externalities. Um, and this is based on, you know, partly my research, partly on, um, you know, the protocol itself. But if we look at uh, businesses, uh, businesses are basically environments where uh, you can capture a common good, good or a public good. Uh, for example, you know, if you have, um, you know, you have a company you're producing, you have obviously could have multiple departments, multiple uh, lines of products. Um, let's say if you provide uh, 
better Wi-Fi, better internet service for one department uh, that could accelerate, uh, you know, product creation can accelerate the business. So you're providing a public good, but you're capturing the value of it because it goes toward, you know, producing more um, products and improving, you know, improving services and so on. So you're actually creating a feedback loop where um, money that comes from the company's uh, treasury can fund um, this public good. And the same thing for negative externalities, actually. Uh, if someone in the business, uh, if someone in one particular department is doing harmful things for the rest of the business, you're not going to tolerate that. You're, you know, going to put measures in place to uh, prevent that from happening. And again, this is maybe money coming out of the treasury, but it benefits everyone. Uh, so something that we don't have in the market broadly, you can actually capture within a business. And the question is, how do we do it uh, in DAOs? How we do we do it um, in the crypto ecosystem more broadly? And I was thinking about um, kind of two uh, analogies, one tug of war and the other uh, like a climbing expedition, like a mountain climbing expedition. Um, and the idea is the following, uh, in, in a business, so this is related to, you know, how do we capture these ideas and kind of bring them into Web3, bring them into a uh, maker, uh, and how do we kind of capture the value, but also how do we align people's uh, interests within the DAO, within uh, maker to um, kind of, you know, make the whole system work better and make uh, you know fewer negative externalities within um the dao for example negative externalities could be in the form of like toxic um you know politics uh, stuff like that and uh the public good side will be like um you know systems that improve uh kind of internal coordination system that improve um you know the internal dynamics that can allow um kind of acceleration of uh you know the adoption of DAI, the you know just improving all um you know what we want to bring to the world, uh, basically. And so the idea is if we look at um, a climbing expedition, you can have a whole bunch of people um, from different backgrounds, different careers, different whatever, but if they all come together, um, they have a common goal. And since they have a common goal, even if there's um, different tools, different paths that they need to uh, take to get to, to the top of the mountain, you still would work together and you'd look for the best solutions. Even if someone has a lot of experience and someone else uh, has a little experience in that field, they'll still look for um, you know, the best solution for uh, everyone because you know everyone wants to get to the top. Um, so that's basically um, how we think about um, alignment. And if you go from the other end of it, which is uh, if you think about like a tug of war game uh, where everyone is just pulling in their own direction, um, you can, again, bring that idea um, into, let's say, the climbing expedition. So if we take a climbing expedition and say, how about we create a business out of it? Um, how about we, um, you know, now it's climbing expedition.inc or everest.inc or whatever it is. And then you, you know, you everyone can get a share uh, of, you know, the, the, the product, which is, you know, getting to the top and then, you know, maybe you get a uh, sponsorship or whatever it is. Um, and, if you apply that dynamic where everyone uh, kind of has a little stake and you know the stake of everyone would grow if um, you know you get the top, well, it still creates issues. Um, and one of the issues is, well, what if someone actually, uh, instead of benefiting from the stock going up, what if they benefit from it going down? What if they short it? So if you have some people who are, you know, over leveraged on a stock and others who are shorting it, um, the dynamic is going to be comp completely different. And that's a question of um, alignment. So that's kind of, um, you know, the broad um dynamic that i want to discuss that if you have um 
if you have an ecosystem and the ecosystem has you know multiple players in it or multiple companies or multiple uh, groups um, and if each of them wants uh, if it's based on finance as opposed to economics and i'll define the difference a bit later uh, but if it's based on finance where everyone just wants uh, their um, product or their project or their um, company to go up in value uh, well, that distorts the dynamics for the whole ecosystem because everyone wants, you know, it's like a, it becomes mm -hmm. a tug of war. Um, so that's kind of the dynamics that I'm trying to uh, illustrate uh, with markets and how we can address them. So again, so if it's a financial system, basically, with that everyone, uh, let's say, has a project in, let's say, in crypto, um, some projects may collaborate, but you're still collaborating against others because there is um, a limit of resources available. And if you want more people invested in your business, that pretty much means that gonna, you want people to invest less in other businesses. That's just the nature of it. Um, so that's creating this dynamic, this tug of war dynamic externally, uh, if it's a bunch of uh, projects, a bunch of businesses, and internally, uh, if it's one project, but you have people with different interests. So the question is, what do you do about it? Um, and how do you create alignment? How do you create uh, this condition where everyone is striving toward um, you know, one goal? Uh, or everyone has uh, something that they all want to achieve, but you don't want the dynamics um, where everyone is pulling in their direction. Um, and just to illustrate this point again, that it doesn't matter uh, if the people have similar backgrounds or similar expertise, uh, it's all about the dynamics. So let's say, again, as I said, um, in the expedition, you can have people with very different backgrounds, but they, they're not going to, um, you know, if someone has expertise in one field, let's say, you know, whatever it is, let's say someone is providing uh, the food rations. Uh, if others don't know as much about, you know, how like calorie counts or whatever it is, uh, they're not going to provide unnecessary input, even though, uh, you know, sometimes if you provide input, you can uh, just for providing the input, you can, uh, you know, gain some recognition, you know, gain some attention in the space. And it's like, oh, this person, uh, you know, provided some input. Therefore, maybe he knows something or she knows something. Um, so again, going back kind of back and forth between the two dynamics. So the question is, again, how do we move from a space where uh, you have rivalry to a space where you have alignment? Um, and that's been my research, and that's been uh, kind of the goal of uh, abundance uh, to create um, techniques and mechanisms to align interests. And um, if we go back to this business to business relationship, uh, where you usually have management uh, and they usually make the decisions for the business, uh, but if they make good decisions, um, and you know, they, if you have like a common treasury, but uh, you allocate the resources properly, then everyone in the business would be um, content with that. You know, even if if one department gets more uh, money to like buy new computers or whatever it is, buy uh, you know new uh, fabrication machines, whatever it is. Uh, if everyone recognizes that it's for the benefit of the business, it's for the benefit of, uh, you know, producing a better product, then everyone knows that, well, actually, this will benefit everyone. So it, I don't mind that it goes to another department. Uh, but it all comes back to, you know, who makes those decisions or how those decisions are made. Um, and, you know, in businesses, we usually have, uh, like, a department or some kind of management that does that in Web3, it works a bit differently. Um, so our decision structure, it could be anywhere from pure democracy, which is like one person, one vote. Uh, it could be plutocracy, which is, you know, uh, one coin, one vote, basically. Uh, you can have representatives where instead of everyone uh, making decisions, you 
you know, either delegate your vote to someone else or you, you know, elect representatives that after some time are replaced and based on their performance. Uh, but we also have this consensus mechanism or mechanisms, uh, which is usually not um discussed too much in crypto which is weird because the whole of crypto is kind of based on consensus mechanisms um so that's one of the things that i want to focus on uh because we already know that pure democracy um you know if you uh listen to rune if you listen to uh some of the discussions within maker you know, the issue is voter apathy. Like the issue is how do you get people, even it's very if it's very important decisions, how do you get people to um, participate, to vote on it, to, uh, you know, discuss it even because uh, maybe it's very important, but not everyone has the expertise or uh, not everyone has the time, not everyone has, um, you know, whatever it is. And because of that, a small percentage of people vote and the results can be skewed. The results can benefit, um, you know, those who uh, maybe maybe bad, bad actors, maybe just have their own interests and so on. Um, plutocracy, um, you know, that's too common uh, in uh, crypto. Basically, that's how most of crypto works, unfortunately, that uh, within DAOs, but also, um, you know, protocols are pretty much based on plutocracy, um, even if we, uh, you know, would like to think that they're not. Um, but uh, basically, you know, if you have more uh, coins, if you have more money, uh, your decisions count more. Uh, and if we look at Bitcoin and Ethereum, um, even though we say, you know, miners don't make the decisions, the nodes do, but uh, at the end of the day, if more uh, people than not have, uh, you know, have more money uh, if they decide that, you know, they want to put all their money behind even one node, eventually all the, you know, stakers or all the miners are going to migrate to that because that's where the money would be. Um, and, you know, if you, if there's no money behind, if like 90% percent of the money goes to one node, eventually the network will kind of formulate, uh, form around that. Um, and yet, um, consensus mechanisms is what brought us here um, in Ethereum and Bitcoin, uh, this idea that you have, um, you have a system where you can actually capture a public good. Um, just like in a business to business transaction. And I call it, sorry for going back and forth, but uh, I call it business to business because um, you have a business, but usually if they get um, some resources, it's usually from another business. So that's why I call it business to business, just to, uh, you know, get back to that. But um, capturing the public good uh, in Bitcoin, in Ethereum, and, and in any other um, protocol is basically through uh, the consensus mechanism, which is, you know, there is um, network security that either miners or uh, validators provide, and that's what um, creates this uh, network, uh, that the network can uh, work and perpetuate itself thanks to the coin inflation uh, and thanks to the consensus mechanism that um, allows everyone to agree that, uh, you know, this process is legitimate, this process is um, um, kind of correct. And since everyone agrees that, you know, whoever is the next um, whoever produces the next block uh, did so legitimately, um, everyone is okay with them getting the reward. And, you know, that's kind of how the consensus uh, is formed and everyone kind of in the network agrees to that. If there is actually uh, a major issue, then, you know, people are not going to agree to that. And you're going to see that basically in the price dropping. Uh, people saying, you know, this network doesn't work as a, as expected. Uh, you know, people produce a blog that was not supposed to be produced. And you're going to see kind of this uh, reverberating throughout uh, the network. Uh, maybe not quick, you know, not immediately, but uh, eventually. Um, so the question is, can we bring consensus uh, as a consensus mechanism, like a, a process uh, to governance. Um, 
um, seeing some comments about would not I won't be able to read it. Uh, Kianga, if you wanna uh, if you wanna read any of those, uh, they'll be uh, perfect because I cannot see them on the screen right now. Um, but that from this and by the way, I do want this to be collaborative. I don't want to just ramble on and on for uh, the next hour. So uh, please do feel free to interject or uh, to ask questions uh, or okay. anything in between. Mike, I'll jump in and I'll just read what um, Monkin, Monkins, Monkins, <laughs> hi Monkins, just wrote that cheat catching mechanisms work well there. And I don't know what that is. In the consensus mechanism? Anyone, also, just as a reminder to anyone on the call, we welcome voice participation. We just have some community members that are anon and generally don't speak, but certainly. Um, yeah, as Mike said, like this can be interactive. Go ahead and put your thoughts in the chat and uh, questions. And Monkins, I don't know if you want to speak or type, maybe give us a little bit more about what your comment, what it was referring to. Uh, but Bona Public has also now asked, is the consensus mechanism based on balance, on balance voting by users and clients? Based on balance um, voting by users and clients. Oh, uh, well, I think. Oh, sorry. Are, I was just going to say that Bono Public also. I mean, Mike is also just giving like a general thought over about. Uh, Kianga cannot hear you. I don't know if you're, if it's a microphone issue or not. Yeah, just clarifying that. Um, okay, great. Can you repeat but that, Kanga? I couldn't oh, hear. So, oh, yeah, sorry. I think I had a, a call coming in. Oh, no, I just clarified in Bona Publica's comment that you're right now just giving this sort of overview of, of your mental models and how you've been thinking about these issues. You're not describing a specific consensus mechanism. Right. At right. this time. Right. Okay. Yeah, I'm kind of <laughs> just rambling along kind of just, uh, you know, bringing uh, different uh, ideas and different uh, issues that, um, you know, we've been dealing with in abundance and uh, trying to solve this big problem of the negative, negative externalities in public goods. And the question was, is really how do you capture those? Um, and not just in abundance, but how do you bring it to other projects? To how do you integrate it into uh, DAOs? How do you integrate it in crypto in general? Uh, and that's kind of just an overview of um, you know the different uh, dynamics, the different mechanisms uh, that work uh, within DAOs and within the ecosystem. And um, that was uh, kind of the issue. Um, so for yeah, consensus, well, I, I love. I just say I'm loving this, and I think. I mean, for me, the silence is because it's so refreshing to kind of take a step back and hear, um, you know, some of these big picture, high level mm -hmm. concepts. Just, just articulated, just to remind all of us of this context that we're, we can get so, um, you know, bogged down. <laughs> <laughs> and so thank you for, for this. Uh, I think others probably feel the same way that it's nice to kind of get together and just talk about some of the general dynamics at play that we're all confronting, but not at this time anyway, not always using the, the, the ABC meetings, to get into the weeds, but but a lot of times to step back yeah, I think and cut out a bit. Yeah, sorry. Just a lot of times, you know, this time to also step back and and hear a presentation like this is great. Thank you. Um, so just I guess getting back to um, this concept of consensus, and obviously we have it um, on the blockchain. Um, that's how blockchains work. Uh, but the question is, can we bring a consens consensus for uh, value judgments? Because uh, for Ethereum, for Bitcoin, for any um, kind of crypto uh, protocol, uh, the consensus is almost scientific. Like, did this happen or did this not happen? Um, but we're asking uh, for a consensus for something that's more related to value judgment um, of, you know, how do you 
you know, how do you decide on um, the best course of action, for example? How do you uh, determine, um, you know, what's the best interest rate to charge or what's the, whatever it is within the context of um, any project? Sorry, how do you, um, how do you create value consensus? Um, and so it has to start with, um, at least from you know our research, our understanding, uh, our conceptualization, um, it has to start start from alignment, um, not from, uh, for example, data. Because for for a lot of a lot of the thinking, sometimes that if you just have the best data um, to work with, then it's easier to form a consensus. Yes, data is important, but without uh, alignment, you'll not be able to get um, the best results. Um, so you need both. You need um, the data, like let's say you have, uh, you know, you have market data, and you you see, um, you know, you can analyze the risk. You can analyze, um, you know, whatever um, whatever information you process. Um, unless you have the alignment of the people involved. Um, the decisions are the quality of the decisions may not be as good. Um, so the question is, how do you get the alignment? Um, and the reason why uh, I want to focus on consensus mechanisms as opposed to uh, the other um, elements, not pure democracy, not plutocracy, uh, one is scale and the other is alignment, as I said before, uh, that within a consensus mechanism, you can uh, create incentive structures you can create the correct incentives that all the people involved um, would you know maybe you would not get a perfect consensus but you can get better decisions um, so if we d look at let's say pure um, let's say plutocracy then obviously not everyone benefits from it uh, obviously those who have more money would benefit more uh, and that kind of, um, you know, hurts the, the fabric of the community, hurts um, how the decisions are uh, made because what benefits uh, those who have the most coins is not necessarily what benefits the, the entire ecosystem. Um, the problem with pure democracy is it's kind of the reverse, actually, that, you know, people who have more coins, maybe they have more staked in, uh, you know, the protocol. Maybe they want, uh, you know, are more aligned with it and anyone who just comes with like uh even a small amount of uh you know uh mkr suddenly you know they they want their vote to be equal to everyone else okay fine but um what's what is going to be the quality of the decision um and the other issue is the volume of decisions that have to be made. Um, if you have to make one decision a week, maybe that's reasonable. Maybe um, you know one a day is maybe too much for the general public. Uh, like not everyone has the time to look at it. Not everyone has the expertise and so on. Um, representative uh, represent uh, representatives of delegates uh, a bit better. Um, you're kind of um, have a system that, uh, you know, the decisions may be a bit better just because people have kind of more understanding, the process is a bit slower, uh, can be more deliber deliberative uh, in the sense that, you know, the people who are uh, re the representatives, they can actually investigate issues, but there is still a whole issue of like, you know, potential corruption, potential, um, you know, manipulating uh, votes to benefit themselves uh, and so on. Um, but consensus mechanisms, they're not, um, they're obviously not clearly defined. Uh, but the question is, can we design a system where um, whoever is participating in the decisions um, can do so in a way that's transparent, in a way that their interests are aligned with the interests of the ecosystem, uh, and in a way that scales? Uh, because again, like if you have, if everyone has to make 10 decisions a day, the system is just not going to work. You're going to have, you know, voter apathy and so on. Um, so that's kind of, um, you know, the, the concept that uh, we're trying to um, 
not necessarily advance, but think about how that could improve uh, eco the ecosystem, how that could, um, like, how do we structure the decision making in a way that uh, it's aligned uh, with everyone and everyone can look at the decision making and say, well, that's, that's, this is reasonable. Um, you know, my vote uh, or my, um, um, I, like I feel represented in this. I I feel that this represents uh, what I want, uh, and I feel that I have a say in, in this uh, mechanism, and I can participate in it. Um, and that's kind of the idea. Um, so I would like to open it uh, now to kind of a broader uh, discussion, broader conversation. Uh, and if you know you guys have questions, I'd love to answer it. I see uh, achieving pure democracy is also not entirely feasible due to the presence of Sybils. Right, exactly. Uh, that's the other issue, correct. So maybe I'll kick off with a question. Um, Mike, you're relatively new to Maker. I mean, you had come to a number of our meetings in, I think, the second quarter. So the first quarter we've done Endgame, and then you've been um really digging in over the past couple of weeks so um any thoughts any high level thoughts on so this the system the structure around consensus that we're trying to develop here at maker with endgame i think this is really important distinction that there's this on chain voting that's our overarching kind of governance Mm -hmm. But then, but then, just trying to figure out a, a legitimate system that even can get us to what we what should be voted on and how. I feel like that's like a big struggle. And do in in do you have any views you can share as like you know your your first impressions of of how the atlas, if you've taken a look at the atlas in mm -hmm. whatever level of detail like how 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 are we doing <laughs> how are we doing on solving for some of this right um so i i've looked at uh like the end game documentation and some of the the articles and some of our uh, runes um kind of podcasts i guess um uh, and presentations um i think there's it's a strong basis. I don't know if um, it's perfectly, uh, I mean, I don't know how much um, leeway there is to improve it. Uh, that's the one thing I'm not sure about. Like it's been voted on, uh, how much can it be improved? But um, I do think that uh, sub DAOs are great, a great idea. Um, I do think that um, kind of insulating um decision making but at the same time like you insulate it to the level of um uh, people who are in the know uh but then you have uh you know if you bring the kind of ai for everyone to be able to understand uh the issues i think these are all um kind of very powerful and useful uh tools uh the question of alignment is kind of the ultimate uh, question for me. Uh, and the way that, like, I don't know if I understand it perfectly, to be honest, the end game, but uh, like the, the way that uh, kind of coins are distributed within between sub DAOs and stuff like that, um, I think it's still a bit um, too financialized, uh, which kind of brings back this kind of, uh, you know, tug of war um mentality which i think you know the closer we move to this common vision and common vision basically means that your economic interests are aligned with the interests of uh, the community as a whole with the project as a whole um, so i think uh, the finance the um, coin distribution um if I understand it correctly, uh, that's a bit closer to kind of this tug of war um, analogy, which would you know lead to less than ideal um, um, decisions. Uh, basically, you know, people would try to just you know farm the coins, and then the decisions they make are they necessarily necessarily going to be aligned with the protocol? Mm, I don't know. 
so that's an issue that you know the the align how do you align these um, and there are ways to align it. There are ways to uh, kind of think about where maybe it's not um, uh, exactly. Maybe you don't distribute the coins equally, as in you don't just distribute it based on whoever has how as much staked. It's not, so it's not just the stake. It's also uh, like uh, actions. Uh, it's also like your uh, reputation within the sub DAO. Um, again, I didn't dwell too deeply into how that's going to be uh, done, but I think that uh, these are ways to improve, um, you know, that process. Uh, if you don't just distribute based on the financials, but if you distribute based on uh, alignment, based on action, based on uh, contribution, uh, at least partly. Um, yeah. Since we don't have a ton of comments in the chat, I mean, certainly feel free everyone to weigh in, but maybe Mike, if you want to get into some specifics of what the design you've come up with at uh, abundance protocol. So then we can get, you know, some, something very concrete as a, you know, example of some, you know, something that in the refi context, you've actually specifically attempted to solve. Sure. Um, so going back to uh, that issue of alignment and the issue of governance uh, and how do you create this consensus uh, decision. Uh, so one of our uh, approaches is basically that you have um, a decision that has to be made, like you know a question. Uh, in our case, it's really about public goods. So someone creates uh, you know a project that's supposed to benefit the ecosystem. And the first question is, what is the expected impact of this project? Is it uh, is it you know a small impact or is it large uh, on the ecosystem? If it's major, uh, you would need uh, more people making the decision uh, on it. And what happens is, uh, so you introduce um, you know you introduce the the project or introduce uh, the question, and then uh, there is a process of deciding. Um, if it's going to be a major impact or a small impact, and all these decisions, just to kind of back up, all these decisions have to be aligned with, um, you know, so basically whoever makes it decides, whoever says, well, this is uh, an important decision, uh, they have something staked uh, in in their in that statement, which is basically if the if the community decides that it was not uh, a major issue, then they're actually going to end up losing money, uh, for example, or losing tokens, and that's why they have an interest in being as accurate as possible in their um, statement. Um, and after that, you have um, a randomized pool of voters, uh, which is based on, um, so these voters uh, would have um, like a reputation score and based on the reputation, um, I'm not going to go into like the whole mechanism, but basically, uh, you know, you have a decision and based on the importance of it, you select a pool of voters, uh, if it's a large pool or small pool, uh, and then they make the decision. Um, based on uh, kind of their expertise and their reputation, and after they make the decision, there is um, there is a period a period uh, where the decision can be challenged by anyone, and after that whole process uh, is decided, then the decision can go into effect. So the idea for why is it ra randomized because you don't want um, whoever requests whoever proposes um, you know, the decision to be made, you don't want them to be able to um, kind of bribe uh, voters. So you don't want them to be able to uh, somehow to influence. So they don't know who the voters are going to be. And that um, kind of helps resolve that. And the idea is that, um, that you do have a mechanism in place and then people can uh, see how transparent it is, how transparent was the decision, who who decided it, uh, and there's a whole process in place. 
and that's why people can uh, you know accept that this is a reasonable decision and you can scale it basically small decisions you don't need a lot of people big decisions you do need a lot of people uh, to decide but you don't need everyone to decide um, on any uh, question at any time um, and the people who are voting are also getting paid to do so. Um, and that kind of creates a system where, um, you know, and, but they have something staked also. So if it's, you know, if they make a bad decision, you know, they have something staked so they can lose it. Um, so the idea is that, um, you know, when they make the decision, um, they have, they're aligned with the protocol, they're aligned with the interests of the wider community and everyone benefits and you don't get uh, a situation where you get voter apathy because uh, people have an interest in this process and um, you know they kind of benefit from it from from voting also so uh, wouldn't they just foster issues being addressed that are obvious we should cover uh, of all fat tail risk, low probability it will happen, but high impact. Uh, in that case, all the coverage that never occurs will be punished. Um, uh, what do you mean by issues? We should... Can you clarify that a bit, Defender? Uh, Defensor? Defense, are you, are you saying if people get to choose, okay, he's going to, they, they are going to write a little bit more. Um, yeah, a lot of what you're describing here reminds me of things that are in the Atlas. Um, some of the dynamics around, say, for example, the facilitator DAOs, how they're meant to operate, that there are these sort of rewards and punishment systems. There's, you know, some concepts of, of of staking certainly the upgraded brand and the new wrapped, new stable, new new gov, and the in the a little bit the the gamification of of those communities developing and farming and participating, and then the lock stake engine. And I mean, it's um it's really all very diff difficult. And we've had powerhouse the team that spun out of of C of, of SES come a couple of times this quarter and 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 share some information that was really exciting to hear right everyone i mean they're building all of these governance tools and mm -hmm. reputation systems um because yeah i mean having something at stake in terms of reputation and adding a financial element i mean it's something that's real that's sort of missing at a more granular level and i think um yeah, I mean, we just have to, I guess, continue to really, really be patient here because we, we didn't have the sort of follow up from them that I know I was hoping for, which was an invitation to the ABCs and the ADs to see some of what they're working on and 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 like fill out surveys and give 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 a little bit of um kind of back and forth because it's so hard to talk about this stuff in a vacuum and how it would apply, how it can apply at Maker. And I think at least where I see the community struggling from the governance side is from that lack of communication. And, and it's it's really, really difficult to just digest from reading the, just all of these sex in the scopes. Um, right. And you don't have very, I mean, you, once I'm having been to Asia, particularly for me, I can see how much the team's are building and kind of preparing and and probably you know really e engaging externally which you know is smart because we are trying you know the whole project is trying to build for the for the world um but it's definitely come at the cost of those of us sort of within the i guess alignment conserver some delegates a lot of community members getting the context getting the, dis the 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 description having the forums for discussion so that we can even have the full vision um, of what is in place and how governance might need to evolve and then of course we can get very bogged down in like the policing of what needs to happen on a day-to-day -day basis and then you know i think what we've talked about mike and with we what we want to try to do to hone our unique perspective as an ABC is to make sure that there's also a governance forum 
for these kind of like the long tail as your ex defensor talked about and and kind of you know really the end game like like where are we going to get to over 4 8 12 quarters and you know that right. this is an abc that is very intentional about being around forever <laughs> and you know we 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 intentionally were created by a decentralized community you know it wasn't kianga who started refi um but you know it was really you know acre dows and wanting to bring you in um as a member of acre dows to to be a participant and a voice so that what we do hopefully is not is definitely sustainable is like not prone to um single central points of failure which is you know, I'm certainly any person is a central point of failure in terms of, um, you know, carrying on this work because it's after two quarters, you know, we're learning that it's very drawn out um, and it, it really does require a lot from all of us. Um, and so we want to provide that forum and the stability, um, but also again, to have some patience with the wider, evolution of what people are actually building and then figure out, well, how do we in one meeting a, mo a week in quarterly documents in asynchronous work, like what should we really do and how can we, particularly as refi, um, make, make, make that impact to improve. I mean, there's so many areas to improve. Um, let me turn to the, you know, I can, you guys know, if those of you have been on this call, you know, I can kind of get long winded. Um, let's see, let's just jump back to the Zero X Defensor. Okay, gave a follow up. All right. They've said every quarter we propose changes to vote on to increase resilience, resiliency and eliminate fat tail risk. The likelihood of those events playing out is very low. Wouldn't this framework you describe keep the stakeholders? from proposing something like that because it is very likely they are wrong. Are you seeing um, that, Mike? Yeah, you... yeah, I okay. saw it. Um, uh, it would not, um, and let me just explain uh, this one moment, is that you don't, th the point is not, um, Elimin not presenting something that's risky. It's about even if you are presenting something that's risky that you're being completely uh, transparent and clear in what you're in what you're proposing. So you can say, uh, you know, I have this issue. Uh, it's very unlikely, but it can have uh, a big impact. And I want to be very clear about that. Um, and once you do that, you know, th that then the process can go along and, you know, maybe it needs, you know, you can decide because th there's could be a million issues that are very unlikely, but have a lot of impact. So you need to kind of balance that. So the question is, if you have 20 of those issues, what do you, folk, what do you uh, kind of, where do you put the resources to work, toward, uh, like how many people should review those? So that's the question. So the idea is that you want people to be as transparent uh, as possible with uh, what they're proposing instead of uh, kind of, you know, in a lot of the cases, it could be like, oh, I discovered this something that's amazing Amazingly, has an incredible impact or something like that because everyone kind of wants to put their voice out there and like you know how look how important I am blah blah blah. Uh, so here the point is that uh, what you're staking is uh, based on your accuracy, on your transparency. It's not about uh, avoiding uh, difficult subjects or avoiding um, you know stuff like that. Uh, that's that's the point of of this process. Thank you for that. Sure. Thank you. Yeah, I think the next Bono Publica's comment there. Um, yeah, I mean, the incentives, and of course, you know, I think Mike, with with abundance, you've you've been able to kind of design this at a time of, of learning <laughs> the, what, what hasn't been working so well at DAOs and, you know, Maker has an incumbent culture and a kind of an incumbent situation that we're trying to evolve through. Um, 
but yeah, I mean, a couple of, you know, the concept of skin in the game and what that means and what that means depending on your role in the ecosystem has been a, been a, been a big topic. Um, you know, but to your last point, Bono Publica, about trusting the person next to you, getting to know your peers, understanding their strengths and their integrity is key. And, I, you know, I would say that the transition from that we've gone through in the last six months, we've lost a lot of what the community has historically relied upon to have some of that trust and alignment. You know, we had a weekly community call where everyone got together in one room. We had much more of um, probably visibility of what, I mean, well, I don't know if I, much more is accurate, but there was a different kind of visibility around um, what was being worked on. Um, but now, you know, that's that's different. And so, yeah, I mean, it's, I think, you know, what's exciting is we're we're all part of something that's, I mean, has it never been done before? I mean, like this idea, I mean, this is the way I think about the end game state where, and I wrote this on Twitter maybe yesterday, as I, as I see sub DAOs, very different from the from the core unit model, right? I mean, it's, it's like I see sub DAOs as maker replicating its entire self and putting a structure in place that allows different variations of like a simple version of maker like a every like everyone could have their flavor of maker and that's essentially what each sub dao is and that the ecosystem actors are being developed to be service providers to multiple mm -hmm. sub dao's and also organizations outside of the maker ecosystem and so you have that competition um but then you again are going to have a, more of that smaller community where people actually can develop a bit of a sense of personal trust, which is sort of ironic that, right, we, we, we are on one hand requiring this anonymity. Um, we, we are introducing all of this artificial intelligence to say we don't want to rely on, on human trust. But, you know, in my views, like at the end of the day, we're, we're, we're all still humans involved in this, and there's just some dynamics that play themselves out. And so that hopefully also the sub DAOs allow us to have the best of both worlds, that the end game structure overall is solving for us not needing to have that kind of trust, but because there are these, the compartmental, you know, the sort of like ecosystem or galaxy approach to getting things done where, and even, I think even in governance, I think this is working well. I, you know, other, other folks who are part of the old system, you know, where we have, are dedicated camps in terms of each AVC to talk about maker the way we want to talk about it, to prioritize the things that, you know, the MKR holders in SoFi, hey folks, <laughs> you know, how they see the world and what they want to do to contribute. They have their, you know, castle. Um, we have composable here hey open sky you know and um you know everyone has their their own castle and, and for, for me i have felt that to be a very positive change that you know maybe we do probably need to figure out a better way to like cross communicate maybe and res in kind of an on the consensus point figure that out but i think it's been healthy um and hopefully this will continue to strengthen and we'll see, you know, the AVC model really strengthen and develop and expand in a certain time frame um, where we know we can really focus um, without the distractions of, of um, the tug of war, Mike, that you talked about. Sorry, I tried to <laughs> release a reaction, but that didn't work. <laughs> uh, okay, so my my computer is not. You can probably so, see my screen though, no? Or maybe not. Yeah, I see. We see your screen. That's the other one though. All right. I was gonna, you know, send a heart. <laughs> but yeah, <laughs> basically saying yeah. I agree. I agree. So Open Sky is saying that proposals are exclusively focused on information sharing and reusable. Governance output second this. 
Yeah. I mean, the challenge for all of us ABCs, right, is like, and, um, you know, we've, we've been really, really focused, like, you all are supposed to do the quarterly documents. Like, that's your work. And then yet so far, it's not clear, like, what impact our quarterly documents have, who reads them. They don't have like governance teeth per se, like they don't automatically trigger anything. They don't trigger a, a penalty if they're not followed in any particular time frame or what have you. So this is really, I think, an interesting experiment in just these like softer social consensus modes, like, you know, who just makes an impact by the sheer force of their brilliance or personalities or like whatever everyone's trying to kind of like break through um, and, you know, the key here also, I think, is, um, you know, so Navigator is saying sub DAOs are key for community building and the continued development of more human social elements for Maker. And Sakura DAO has the most potential on that front. Yeah, I mean, for sure, like heart on fire. Um, and at the top, just for everyone who's joined a little bit later, at the very top of the meeting chat, at the beginning of today's comments, I put a link to Rune's tweet thread, um, which basically gives you all the slides um, from the talk that I saw in Singapore at Token 2049. Um, and then another video that was released on Twitter today of him speaking in Korea. And uh, you know, I was just really struck by getting such a better view of the of 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 the sub DAO model and how it's being you know built and how it launched over the course of the last couple of weeks in Asia. And I definitely encourage everyone to go mm -hmm. ahead and join all of those server those other servers and and see that there's yeah there, I mean there's there's engagement there there's conversation there and also realizing that the same teams that we're looking to for like our core day-to-day -day maker stuff, I mean, they're also now shouldering all the legacy and then also building out, you know, kind of some foundation uh, that can be replicated in terms of this sub DAO model. I mean, it's a huge, I mean, it's a huge amount of activity and, um, but number one, right. And I think, and I know we're coming up onto time. And so if you have any last thoughts, paper reads our quarterly documents. <laughs> if you have any, anyone have any, you know, last things they want to share, please, please, please do that. And I've also scheduled a Q&A for Friday at uh, 10 a.m. Eastern. I believe that's 4 p.m. UTC. Uh, you know, just so you know, we can have an hour for anyone who wants to drop in. Um, to go through reflections, our our quarterly docs will be out by then or or at that hour. <laughs> We're working on them, um, but we just really wanted to be very, of course, extremely thoughtful. And one of the things that you know we're thinking a lot about is community and culture, and 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 that how are we going to make this an interesting place? For, for new people to come, welcoming, interesting, and then also sticky. I'm a little bit concerned that if it's all tokenomics and kind of video games and gamification and TikTokification of banking and all of that, you know, for what we need in governance and what we need from all of you delegates is something that's incredibly challenging and painstaking. Um, and so, you know, I think we want Refi AVC to be a place that's uh, kind of, you know, definitely trying to think about that dynamic as well um, as all the as all the brainy stuff about finance that we've also got to wrap our minds around and interest rates and asset liability. Models and there's a lot, um, but look, I think just to say a little bit again, you know, we'll we'll be you know finalizing our documents up until the very last moment. So circle back on Friday if you want to jam on that. Um, but you know, 
personally, being on the ground in Asia was absolutely fantastic. I don't go to a lot of conferences. Um, you know, being involved in governance over the past, you know, two years at Maker, you know, where, where I've been, you know, at a distance, obviously, it's not a workforce role where you get the, I think what's pleasurable about, you know, working with a team to points that have been made in this chat, um, in the trenches building as much as other parts of the ecosystem. And so even just, you know, mm -hmm. a few hours to see people face to face and, and, and also see others, outsiders, react to the information is was all very 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 positive and inspiring experience and so um i think we're all part of something that's going to be enormously successful and and foundational for what comes next in in DeFi and all of traditional finance basically so that's uh, that's it for today, everyone. Mike, thank you so much for that. And um, you know, if this is also previewing for everyone. You know, the research and and thinking that's going into our governance strategy for Refi ABC. We just really have admired Pro um, Abundance DAO and Mike's work there. And and I think it's going to be a real rich source of fresh fresh blood, fresh thinking for us here at Maker. So with that, uh, take care, everyone. See you next time. Thank you.